We're going to continue looking at the elements of the scientific report and in this video we're going to look at the second part of what you did. We're going to cover the risk assessment, the materials list, the diagram and the method. It's very important when conducting a scientific experiment that you do a risk assessment. What you need to do is look at your experiment and see if there is anything dangerous that is going to happen in your experiment or could happen in your experiment. And then you need to work out how you're going to prevent this danger from occurring and what are you going to do in the case that this danger still happens. If there aren't any dangers in your experiment, you need to specifically say that there are no risks associated with this experiment. I find that the best way to set out a risk assessment is in this table, where in the first column we have the hazard, which is what is dangerous in the experiment. We then have the risk, or the why it's dangerous, and the mitigation, which is how we're going to stop this from happening, and what we're going to do if it does happen. So the example here, I've got an experiment where I'm using acid, so hazard, the thing that's dangerous is the acid. The reason that it's dangerous is because acid is corrosive and can burn the skin and eyes. In, to stop this from occurring, I'm going to wear safety glasses and a lab coat. And in case it does happen, I'm going to wash the skin with excess water. The materials is simply a list of the materials that you need to do the experiment. And this is so that if somebody is reading your experiment, they can replicate it. As part of this, you may or may not want to include the total amount of materials that you used so that somebody setting it up needs uh, can work out how much they need. It's always a good idea to include a labelled diagram of the experimental setup. As I say, a picture paints a thousand words and this aids the reader in visualising your experiment and how you go about your experiment while they're reading the method. So the method. The method is a step-by-step -step recount of your experiment. So the things that you did in your experiment and how you conducted your experiment. Your method should be numbered. It should be in past tense. It shouldn't include any pronouns like I or we. It should include specific amounts and times. And it should include any measurements that you made. So here's an example of a method that I've put together. And you can see that it's all in past tense, so it's not place 10 mils of vinegar like a cookbook. It's 10 mils of vinegar was placed. There is no pronoun, so it's not I placed 10 mils of vinegar. Uh, we've also got the specific amounts of things that need to be used. For example, one gram of bicarb soda and leaving it for 10 minutes, as well as the things that are going to be measured. For example, the gas produced is measured by displacing water in a bucket and it's in a clear set out with numbered steps. In this video, we've looked at the risk assessment and assessing your risk and presenting your risk assessment in a table where you've got the hazard, the risk and the mitigation, the materials list and the list of materials that you're going to use a diagram of your setup to show what your experiment looked like and to aid the reader in visualising your experiment, and the method, which needs to be in past tense with no pronouns and include specific amounts and measurements that you're going to make, as well as be in clear numbered steps.